my friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, in this tutorial, we will create the fire rod entity. So I prepared a small PNG file here and we'll create the, the fire rod uh, item more exactly, which will be very similar to the lantern. The lantern creates uh, some fire and the fire rod will do the same, the same but we will just create a movement on the, the created fire entity and we'll see what happens. This will be another tutorial about, about custom entities, of course, because the fire is a custom entity and the torches are also a custom entity. Okay, but first let's create our item. Um, so, new item script, fire rod, And as always, when you create any item, you have a little bit of work and I will go slightly faster this time because we, we did that in a lot of tutorials actually already. And last time we did it, it was in the tutorial about uh, creating the fire, uh, the lantern, sorry. So we create an animation that has the name of your item in the entities slash items script. And in that animation, we will use uh, our small PNG file here. And by the way, the PNG file comes from the Trillium resource pack. Okay, and our animation will only have one direction because there is only one variant of the fire rod. Okay, so we need the sprite, we need the dialogue also in dialogues.dat. And it has to be called underscore treasure dot the name of the item dot the variant. So you should be used to all of this. And if not, you can we can watch the tutorial where we created the lantern a few tutorials ago, or even the tutorial about items and treasures. Um, okay, you found the fire rod. And you can say things like, you can shoot fire at your enemies. Cool. Um, so the item sprite and the dialogue are hard-coded stuff in the engine, so you really always have to do these. And if not, well, the item will, will not have any sprite and the dialogue will not be shown. And, um, but now that we have also an inventory script, we also need to in update the inventory. Uh, in, where is it? <laughs> Pause menu. To put our fire rod somewhere in the inventory grid. And when we select in the inventory the fire rod, the name of that item will be displayed. So we need inventory dot item dot uh, the name of the item fire rod. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, let's put the fire rod in some chest. Fire rod. And when you want an item that is um, in the inventory, it has to be saved. Otherwise, the inventory. Uh, well, let's let's forget to do it on purpose, and <laughs> you will understand why why you need to be you need it to be saved. You find the fire rod, cool. But if you press D to pause the game, you will have an error here saying that the fire rod is not saved which means the inventory script is unable to determine if the if we have the fire rod or not because the fire rod has no possession state so we need to save this, the possession state of the fire rod in by using set save game variable save game variable 
uh, position fire rod and also it has to be assignable to authorize the inventory subscreen to um, yeah to assign the fire rod to an item slot when you press X or V cool um, so let's save the game now we don't have a, a menu to save the game yet in in the in our pause menu but in the uh, we, can, we can always use this quick Lua console here to to just input some code some Lua code and now the game is saved uh, I did that just to be able to to retest quicker next time when I close the window the game and, and test it again after some changes uh, okay cool so my lantern still works but I, I haven't started to implement really the, the fire rod okay so let's close all of these and let's open the lantern script because actually in on using the code will be very similar but we will just add a movement so for now I'm duplicating all the code but we will see how to uh, avoid the code duplication so same thing we create the, the fire custom entity here we configure it to remove itself when the sprite animation is finished and we add some collision tests to react to enemies and to react to torches the only difference with the lantern is that we also want a movement so let's create a movement so this tutorial is about custom custom entities still mainly but as you can see we we can also uh, talk again about movements and about items so it's always good to, to refresh your memory so when you create a, a straight movement uh, you you can call some functions like set angle set max distance set speed but mainly uh, you almost always to set the need to set the angle and and the speed so the angle will be uh, actually we already have the direction which is this which is the angle basically but in a four four direction systems system so let's create a variable called angle and to convert our direction which is 0 1 2 th or 3 into an angle in radians we just have to multiply the direction by uh, pi over 2 to let, let zero uh, if the direction is zero it's it will the angle will be zero if the direction is one so the north the angle will be uh, 90 degrees and and so on okay we have the angle let's set the speed arbitrarily to 250 pixels per second and well let's try like this as a start and let's start our our movement on the fire custom entity that we created here and at this point we should already have a working uh, fire rod it's even able to hurt enemies and well there, there are some a lot of things to improve first a small detail when the fire hits some uh, obstacle here but there is uh, I mean it's, it's like the hero when when I walk like this only to the right the engine will automatically readjust my movement to uh, to be able to pass and we really don't want that for fire because it's weird it's convenient for the enemy or for heroes that the 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 movement is is, is smooth like this but 
uh, if I do the same for fire it will look weird do you see that so if you want to disable this behavior it's the smooth property of straight movement here set smooth uh, you just set it to false we probably saw that already in past tutorials but uh, this is tutorial 58 and <laughs> it's hard probably to remember everything so movement set smooth false this also applies to diagonal walls by the way but there is no diagonal walls in that uh, tutorial in th in this uh, die set sorry so now the fire will really just stop even if it's stuck only by one pixel so i think this is more normal uh, it still looks kind of weird here but it's not the fault of the movement it's more the fault of the tie set because this is actually a full obstacle probably um, where is it this yeah this is a wall maybe maybe it would be it would be better to be only a diagonal wall like this This is completely out of scope of the tutorial, of course, but uh, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> I think it's because the tie set is not reloaded when you exit and re-enter the map. Yeah, it's better like this, I think. Okay, anyway, um, we are really not done with our fire rod. There are a lot of things to implement still. First, the fact that when you hit an enemy, you want probably want the fire to stop. So we'll see how to do that. Uh, I mean, it's probably very easy, but we'll, see, we'll do it. And um, we also want to check that torches can still be lit by fire. And, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason is that in the previous tutorial, we configured the torch to be an obstacle for everything so even the fire entity cannot traverse the torch which means that it will never be able to lit the torch since it cannot really collide with it it cannot really overlap it so we we'll see how to how to fix that there are, there are at least two solutions and um, first one one really big problem is that we duplicated some code and this is too much duplication here um, our fire script is still relatively short but in a real project it will be much much longer we configured the fire to um, remove itself when the animation is finished to hurt enemies to light torches but in a real project you, you will do more probably you will want to um, burn bushes for instance why not here nothing happens on bushes but if you see uh, one of our i mean several multiple projects of um, the solaris team we we do that actually so if you're curious you 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 can see how to burn bushes using the, um, the fire rod i maybe we, we won't do it in in these tutorials because we already have a lot of, of examples and um, okay so how to avoid the duplication we can use a model for the fire entity instead of creating an, a random custom entity here and configuring everything later we can create it with with a model that we can call uh, fire <laughs> and this will simply call the fire script in the in the entities uh, folder so it we will create a script called fire here and that script will simply contain what we used to do here in the item script 
so I want to cut this part and paste it here so we don't have any variable called fire because we called it entity here so you can rename it fire there or keep the entity name everywhere uh, it's just a matter of a matter of taste and I think all of this should work and remain unchanged uh, okay let's do the same in the lantern script we create uh, the custom entity with the fire model lantern fire rod uh, maybe the play sound I want it to be more here create the movement so yeah okay we in both scripts we we create the fire with the same properties and the only difference is that in the fire rod we add this movement um, this part here is still duplicated the part where we compute the, the direction um, so maybe you also want to factorize this somewhere because actually this code of um, computing the creation point of, of an entity it's, it can be useful even in other places of your projects so you could considering uh, uh, creating a, a small utility script with this kind of helper functions but okay Let's say we are happy for now in this tutorial because the focus is more about, cre about custom entity models. So if we test again, uh, the, lantern wor the lantern works and the fire rod still works. Cool. And now all the code related to fire is in the fire script. So it's really cleaner. Um, when we create small detail, when we create the custom entity here, we pass the sprite parameter, but let's say we don't pass it here because I mean the fire script will only work with that particular sprite anyway. I mean at least, uh, we, well, we will always want that particular sprite. So instead of uh, creating it from the fire rod and the lantern, we can we can create the sprite from the fire script itself, like like we do for enemies. And the sprite is entity slash fire. Okay, um, so our fire stops when when the animation is finished. Still, still. So the sprite animation actually defines the distance of the movement because of that code. The entity is removed when when the sprite animation is finished. So if you don't like that, you can. Well, my initial plan was to use this animation which actually repeat itself repeats itself I wanted initially to use that for the fire rod uh, but actually I like it that it will simply stop when when the animation uh, finishes so with this animation here there it is an animation that has an, an end but this one repeats and never finishes so if you want to use that one is instead but you want your fire entity to you don't want it to have an infinite movement then uh, you need some additional code to to set a maximum distance uh, on your movement for instance which you can do here set max distance and you also need some code to destroy the fire 
um, after a small delay when when the entity is stopped, when the movement is is finished, or when a, an obstacle is reached. Um, okay, but um, yeah, there are. I wanted to mention that just to um, explain that there are a lot of ways to to implement that kind of of, of weapon. So this tutorial is also is already 20 minutes long, so I, we won't have time in this one to to see how to stop the fire when it hits an enemy. Well, here it was stopped because of the <laughs> of this tree, but um, and and we also want to fix, of course, the the torches because torches currently don't work with the, the initial implementation of the fire rod. So we'll do these improvements in, in the next tutorial. Thank you all for watching, I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time. Bye!